Good morning, let's start in a seated meditation. Set yourself up so that you're supported and comfortable. And that's really a thing. I started all my sports in the 80s and no pain, no gain was basically the um, the adage, right? And now we realize that you can have gains without pain. <laughs> and this is one of those places where we're looking for it. We're looking for equal action, balanced action between what is soft and what is firm. And so as you take your seat, you're looking for support. So the pelvic floor may lift. You may get a sense of grounding down. And you'll have to add some energy so that you're not all slumpy, right? Like there's no power here. So you want to add some energy to lift the torso, the shoulders back. Lift the head up off of the neck, right? Like really get some length. And once you're here, you're just here and you don't have to change a thing. You can set your eyes to one point or close them. I'll ask you to do what keeps you awake and aware. Sometimes when we close our eyes, we get very sleepy. And so if that's you, I'm gonna ask you to open your eyes and set them to one point. Otherwise, leave them closed. And then become, let your attention walk around your body. Relaxing your jaw and your eyeballs and your eyelids. Engage the muscles to breathe. Choose a physical focus in your body. It can be, I mean, some people like to kind of create it through their forehead as a third eye. I like to bring it to my hands, it's super tangible for me. But draw your focus to a location in your body. And what you're using that for is anytime you feel like you're distracted or drawn out, you come right back there. And you really get super tangible with it. You notice temperature, energy, touch. And even something like a sneeze or a cough doesn't really take you out, just momentarily. And you set back up, reset, re-engage. One breath at a time. You know, sometimes when you're guided in meditation and the speaker gets quiet, your mind can wander and wander with an A. If it does, just shift it back to your focal point in your body and turn the wander into wonder. How wonderful the body can be.
You remind yourself there's no wrong way to do this. Keeping your breath. And draw your hands to your chest. Thumbs to forehead. Namaste. Awesome. Fall into child's pose. And as you do, your body will naturally take the shape, right? You know what you're doing. It'll naturally take the shape. And then come back to that place where you're adding energy where you need it. My suggestion would be the pelvic floor, the low belly, the very, very top of the pubic bone, not part of the low belly. And then maybe your upper back as you reach your arms long and you're working to make some space, working to open the torso so that you can breathe deeper as we create in the practice, the ujjayi breath. The ujjayi breath, full diaphragmatic breath, expanding and contracting the physical muscles. And for me, when I breathe in, I tend to hollow my throat in order to breathe deeper. And then when I breathe out, I tend to create a little restriction to slow the exhale. Otherwise, it just falls out like a, I don't know, like a blowing out the candle or something. So I try to slow it down, which allows me to create a deeper breath. Two more. Making more space with each breath. Last one in, last one out. Downward facing dog, shift your body. Take the general shape, move around a little bit, kind of walk your feet in and out, find the sweet spot for your body that place where you have strength in your legs, especially the fronts of your legs, opening in the backs of your legs, opening in the Achilles, grounding into the feet. And then the pelvis is a place of grounding too. So you lift up into the pelvis and then the pelvis becomes a grounding point for the base of the spine. From the base of the spine to the crown of the head, you create length, so the gaze set in the middle of your mat. Bring your attention to your hands, spread them wide. Feel the energy in the finger pads more than the wrists. You do that by pressing into the fingertips and pulling your arm muscles, like the muscles in the upper arms, you pull them up and back so that you're locking your shoulders in place, creating space in the upper back, space in the chest, and ease in the hands. Practice is meant to be done for a lifetime. And if you dump in your joints, it's gonna be really hard to do that. Today, let's walk our hands back to meet our feet. Take your feet wide for ragdoll. You'll lengthen as you get to the back and then fold. Nothing like all these forward folds to empty everything in my sinuses, y'all. Sorry. Hopefully it won't be too bothersome. Keep breathing.
Take your hands down, bring your feet in, lengthen your spine. Actively fold in, press down into your mat, pull yourself in. And then from the floor, rise. Big reach up. You're gonna hold this extended mountain for just a few seconds. Press into the feet, squeeze the quads, lift the front of the pelvis, engage your shoulders onto your back. Start to get used to this action. Breathe in and then fold forward. Lengthen your spine. Walk yourself out to down dog, exhale. Inhale, rooting down. Exhale, squeezing the front of the belly. Step to the top. Lengthen your spine. Fold. Rise. Fold forward. Halfway left. Low push up. Up dog. Down dog. In breath. Out breath. Step forward. Lengthen your spine. Fold. <coughs> Rise. Fold forward. Half lift. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. In. Out. Step forward. Lengthen. Fold. Rise. Fold forward. Lift. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. In. Breathe out. Step to the top. So we're going to pause right here. I want you to soften your knees. You're going to lengthen your spine. So you can have your hands to your shins, but I'm looking for feet coming right out of your hips, pressing down into your feet and creating this length, right? So there's a tendency to lock the legs out and it kind of locks your spine. So soften your knees, press tailbone back, crown forward, lift your shoulders onto your back. If you can do that and keep your fingertips on the floor, awesome. If not, don't worry about it. But the length is from the tailbone to the crown. I use bent knees to get there and then fold. From there, rise, extended mountain. Fold forward, empty your air. Real quick check in that your feet are square. This is a place to look. Halfway lift, so soften your knees, shoulders onto your back so that the spine is long, like you're gonna lift a heavy weight and then step back, low push up. Upward dog, downward dog. Again, in breath. Practice the back length here, right? So the length you get in your back in down dog is the same length you want in the halfway lift. Just different placement of your feet. Breathe in, empty your air, step or jump forward. Lengthen your spine and fold. Nice, all the way up extended mountain. You're using your legs and then fold back down. So. With bent knees, you actually have access to that. Bend your knees a little and halfway lift again. So bend your knees and halfway lift. So hands can reach the floor, your shins, whatever. Yeah, take a breath. When you exhale, you keep your knees bent and you fold over your legs. Fold over them. Good, now press down into the floor, rise up, extend them out. And your spine should lock in so it's one big unit. Nice, fold forward again, exhale. Beautiful lift halfway. This is your preparation for low push up. So you want your hands on the floor, right? Bend your knees and then step back, low push up. Upward dog and downward dog. I like it when Roger and Andrea are ahead of us. That makes me feel happy. <laughs> <coughs> breathe in. <coughs> Sorry, breathe out. Step or jump forward. Lengthen your spine. Check your feet. 
fold. Go into chair pose, do chair. Kind of as a warm up, a warm up chair. Yeah, then feel the feet on the floor. Hug a the bones into the pelvis. Nice, a little pull up in the pelvic floor. Breathe. Empty. Rise all the way up, extended mountain. Beautiful, fold forward, exhale. Lengthen your spine, inhale. Low push up, exhale. Upward dog in. Downward dog out. Full breath. Empty it out. Step forward, lengthen your spine, fold, chair, take a breath, exhale, now breathe in, fold forward, lift, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, warrior one, right foot. Step, take a second, rise up. Big breath. And then chaturanga. Up dog, down dog. Okay, so for warrior one, the breakdown is, you're in down dog, you breathe in. And as you're breathing out, the end of the exhale, your left knee will come into your chest. You step your foot up next to your left thumb, turn the right foot down and rise. Mm -hmm. Bent knees, perfect, perfect. Good, breathe in and take it down, low push up. Up dog, down dog, in breath, out breath, step or jump forward, lengthen your spine, fold, chair, fold. Lift, chaturanga, up dog, shoulders back, down dog, exhale, into that breath, right knee into chest, right foot steps, back foot anchors, rise. And then little push up, working toward one, half breath propose, up dog, down dog, left side, and if ever it takes you a little longer to move into the poses, just go to down dog and then meet us. Low push up. Up dog, downward facing dog. Take a big breath, empty it all out. Step or jump forward, lift and lengthen, fold, chair. Hold, half lift, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, right foot warrior one, and low push up, up dog, down dog, left foot warrior one, Low push up, you got it. Up dog, repetition creating muscle and memory, down dog. Step forward, lengthen, fold. Chair, building the energy to create the awakening, fold, half lift. Chaturanga, powerfully pressing into the hands and the feet, up dog, down dog, warrior one, right? And then chaturanga. Now you can always just step straight back to down dog and hold, up dog, down dog, left foot, warrior one. And then chaturanga, or you step straight back to down dog. Up dog and down dog. We'll have plenty of chaturangas and up dogs. Take a full breath. Empty. 
Step or jump. Lift and lengthen. Hold. Chair. Hold. Half lift. Chaturanga, low push up. Up dog. Down dog. Right foot to warrior one. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Left foot to warrior one. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. In breath. Breathe it all out. Jump forward. Lengthen your spine. Fold. Chair. Uh, fold. Half lift. Chaturanga. I was trying to skip the fold. <laughs> Up dog. <coughs> Down dog. <coughs> right side warrior one. And Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Left side, warrior one. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Pause and breathe. Lift your right leg behind you, flex your foot. Press firmly in both hands. You can bend the upper knee, open it up to the side. You can stay right here. You can play with coming to the ball mound of the left foot and then pressing the heel down. Or you can flip the dog by coming to the ball mound of the left foot, bend your knee and flip it over. There's no right or wrong. Do what feels good. Breathe. One more breath here. And then you're going to take it around to down dog. You're going to pause and bat down dog. Bring your feet to touch. Right arm goes down. Left arm goes up for side plank. We have options here. My favorite building block is left foot in front to press down and lift up. Another option is right knee down, left leg straight, or the full version. Or you can start to advance it by lifting the left leg. You got to be really integrated for that. It's more integration than strength. Drishti goes up, that's your eye gaze. One more breath. And then low push up. Up dog. Down dog. Hold and breathe. Left leg up. And bend the knee and stack the hip. Same options here. If you'd like, go ahead and flip your dog. One more breath. And take it around, downward facing dog. Feet to touch, left arm down, left hand down, and open it up. Another option for short, short I'm sorry, sore wrist is to go to the forearm. One more breath. And take it down, Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. You're gonna bring your right knee into your chest. Slowly step it up for crescent lunge. Make sure you feel stable on your two feet. Back heel is turned under. So I mean, I'm sorry, back toes are turned under, heel is lifted.
Then you're gonna twist to the right, bringing your left elbow to your right knee, looking for length in the spine. And then open it up for warrior two. Reverse this warrior. And then come back to warrior two and pause. So what we're looking for is our torso to stack. So you can see that a natural tendency is for the torso to lean already. See if it can start stacked. And then you're gonna reach forward and come into extended side angle. Forearm to your thigh or hand down to a block on the outside of your foot and breathe. You can also grab your ankle and pull yourself in. Working both hips even. So notice if you come down, this left hip has to come with the right. Not like that, like this. I'm on the slippery mat for this pose. It's never really great. Okay, breathe in and breathe out. Come down, chaturanga. Up dog. And downward facing dog. <sighs> Left foot forward, crescent lunge. And twist. Once you're in the pose, give it to your breath, in and out, out. Using the natural tension at the end of the exhale to squeeze the lowest part of the belly, taking the tailbone away from the crown. Empty it out, warrior two. Reverse, extended side angle. One more, and both hands come down, chaturanga. Up dog, down dog. Take a big breath, push the air, step or jump forward, lift and lengthen, fold. I'm gonna practice chair, have a seat, arms reach. And this time we're gonna to twist to the right, hands to the chest, twist right. If it helps you as a building block, you can drop your left hand and reach your right one up. Sometimes that helps us get out of the head and neck a little bit, more shoulders. One more breath. Go ahead and fold forward, walk your feet out. Grab your big toes, lengthen and pull yourself in, fold. Release, heel toe the feet in, lengthen your spine, fold, chair, twist left, looking for your seat lower than your chest. Sometimes if you need more lift in your chest, you can take a tall block between your knees, take your elbows to the tall block. Right, so that's one way to get you out of the deep chair and still keep your chest lifted. Breath in and fold over. Walk your feet out. You're gonna step on your hands, a gorilla, and your palms walk under your feet so that your toes tickle the wrists. Palm side up.
This is one of the more fun poses to do with kids because they make all the noises. Okay, release. Now toe the feet in. Let's go in for a crow or a crow prep. The prep is merely hands flat on the floor, coming into the ball mounds of your feet, heels together. You just take your knees up here and hold. So you don't have to do anything else. If you're working it, you can lift one leg or both to come into the full version of the pose. Five, four, three, two. Inhale. Shoot it out on your out breath. Up dog. Down dog. And then you're going to bring your feet to touch. Bend your knees. Take an inhale. And then exhale completely. Spring forward. Lengthen your spine. Fold. Rise all the way up extended mountain. Right arm under. Right leg over for eagle. Breathe. Inhale, reach up. Eagle left, bend at the hips. Left leg goes over. You can take your foot to the floor even. Left arm under. And reach up. The key to this series is your gaze. Set your gaze. And then right side. So when I say set your gaze, I want you to find a point to look at. It's not a hard, it's a soft gaze. It's a focal point. Where you need your head to land is where I encourage you to set your gaze. And then inhale up. Exhale. Options for arms, if the wrap isn't possible, is you glue your elbows and your hands together and you lift up, pull your shoulders back. Empty. And reach up. Hands come to your chest. You can lift your right leg up. You can go bent knee or full extension. Lift your left hand to the sky, gaze forward. Breathe. Take it out to the right. Breathe. Center. You're going to airplane. Bend your knee. Shoot your foot straight behind you. Back is flat. Shoulders lift. Wings lift. Hold over your standing leg. You can use a block or water bottle or the floor. Press down, you're gonna spin, open, balancing on the left leg, opening the body to the side for half moon. Gaze can go up if you're there. Keep the gaze down if you're unstable. Sometimes the challenge in the pose is shifting the gaze. And then the right foot comes down. Rise that mountain. Hands to chest. Left leg up, bent knee or straight leg right in front of you. Out to the left. Arm to the right. Keep lengthening the side body. It's real easy to do this. So I'm trying to press into my foot and lengthen. One more breath. Empty, it's okay, don't worry. Like if you're, if you're slippery, don't worry. You just come back whenever you can. Foot in, step back to airplane. It's not about getting it perfect, it's about doing the practice. And it honestly doesn't even matter what it looks like. You breathe and you move your body and you start to create strength and balance as you go. 
And then fold over your standing leg. Right arm down, left arm up. One more. And foot to the floor. Awesome. You're going to rise up. If you have a strap, grab it. We're going in for a dancer. I'm going to show it with and without the strap. So without the strap, chest forward. You're going to grab your right leg with your hand as if you're holding a pizza tray. And then your left arm. I would do chicken wings. So I would take your arm here. It's just going to help you open your chest more. And you're looking for... You're looking for this integration and then you lift up behind you. And I'll straight up tell you, I use a strap because I become really disintegrated really fast when I use my hand. It's a little bit harder for me to use my hand. Three, two, and one. Beth, bend your standing knee a little bit. That might give you more balance. Left side. So we start with your feet at 12 o'clock. Both knees start bent. That's what gives you access to the lift. Once you have access to the lift, if you can straighten your leg and maintain it, that's fine. When I straighten my leg, my left, my back leg abducts. I can't really, my body won't really do that. At least not today. Nice, switch sides. So you come back to mountain, reset, gaze forward. Pick up your right leg. Take it behind you. One more. And switch it, left leg up. So it's interesting, the sequence is equanimity, the balancing sequence. And I really see the utility as creating calm in the storm, right? Sometimes we're super unstable because we're lacking focus. Sometimes we're super unstable because we're lacking breath. And when you start to bring everything into balance, focus and breath and gaze, the pose does itself, left leg down. Hands by your side. Set your gaze forward. Feel the weight in your left foot. Bring your right foot up for a tree. Hands start at your chest. Press your palms together, pull your shoulders back. From this link, if you wanna go up, go up. But you're creating the integration into your center line first. Set your gaze. And then right foot down, left side. Just one arm up, Andrea. You can leave the other one down. Yeah, reach up. There you go, it's okay. And put down hands in, well done. Big reach up. Fold forward. Lengthen your spine. Step or jump, chaturanga. If you jump, bubbles bent, up dog. Down dog, right into warrior one. And warrior two. This is where a prop is super handy for a triangle. If you don't have a block, use a water bottle or a shoe or something, a book. And go into triangle any way you want. I'm gonna to reverse today and straighten. All you're looking for is two feet and one hand connected to the earth. And then balance in the pelvis front to back, 
lengthen your spine and breathe. Press down, raise up, turn your toes to the left side, open your chest, fold over, any arm variation you wish. So you can take your hands to the center or each foot. Or you can keep the bind. Nice. Integrate your shoulders and then rise up. Turn your feet. You can take your hands behind you and create a bind. Lift your shoulders off your back. I mean, onto your back, sorry. Lift your fingers off your seat. Seat back, chest forward. This is pyramid. And we're gonna drop our hands, find a block inside or outside of your foot. Press down, open up. If you don't have a block, use your spider fingers or a bottle or something. It's been open. Energy in your back foot and hands down. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Left side, warrior one first. Warrior two. into triangle. Reach out of breath. And on this side, you're just going to step the back foot up. Do your bind, same or different. Open the chest, shoulders onto your back, tailbone back. Reach forward, lift your hands so that your arms are integrated into your spine. Drop your hands, find the block, lengthen and twisting triangle. Working on square pelvis, chest opening to the sides and the gaze as soon as you can up. Energy in the back foot. One more. And hands down. Nicely done. Chaturanga. Up dog. Down dog. Beautiful. Inhale into high plank. And lower down five, four, three, two, four. Lay one ear down. Center your head and neck. You can take your hands by your side. I like to use my fingertips and turn my toes under. You're lifting into locust. I always start with my upper back and then lift my legs to try to make sure I'm staying integrated. It's real easy for me to hunch here. So I'm lifting first, three, two, and one, opposite ear. Come back to center, rooting into the pelvis, open up, locust. Bend your right leg, keep your left one straight, kind of work into a half bow, just warming. And then you're gonna switch it. Just priming your body. And then back to locust and down to the floor.
Grab both feet or ankles. Flex your feet. And you get your shoulders, lift up, floor bow. Head next day neutral, which usually means your drishti is down. People who are highly mobile may have their drishti forward as they roll onto their legs. One more breath, come down. Floor bow number two. Open up. Come down. This time take your hands by your side, wrap your arms in, open up, up dog. Full breath, down dog. Come to your knees. Toes can turn under or lie flat. Keep pelvis right over your knees, shoulders on your back for camel. You take your hands to your seat first, just open right here. We can keep going. Come up. Have a seat on your feet. We're gonna Salute together, have a drink. I've taken so much allergy medicine that I swear I drink two gallons a day. <laughs> can't, can't quite win when the pollen is out. Okay, come up. Integrate your shoulders on your back first. Keep the hips stacked over your knees and go back camel. Hands to your seat is a great place to begin. One more breath. Chin comes to your chest, come up. Well done. Just take your feet in front of you and go right into bridge pose. At my last training, Baron was so funny. He says, whenever I call bridge, it's usually everything but bridge pose. I started laughing because we all know it's true, right? Warrior two is where we officially straighten our clothes and bridge is where we do everything else. So just come to it. <coughs> and find your breath. And slowly roll down. Good. We're just going to do four more back bends. You get to choose bridge or wheel. The call is wheel, um, but bridge is a, a great alternative as long as you activate the bridge. So bridge is breathe in and out, come up, and then you add your arms if wheel is in your practice today. In, breathe out. Whatever you're chose, you've chosen, roll down. Good, breathe in. Breathe out, integrate from your feet and your pelvis, go up. Add your arms if you're doing wheel. Any combination of these back bends works. I ask you to know the difference between taking care of yourself and coughing out. One more breath and come down. Breathe in and breathe out, go up. Add your arms if you're doing wheel. So what we work through in this practice is not to be ego-driven. You wanna come from that 
inner self that's doing the thing that's expanding we need to expand that's holding back we need to hold back without a whole lot of intellectualizing about it just do it come down breathe in breathe out and go up and come down Take a second, let your legs kind of flop side to side. And then soles of your feet together, knees out for butterfly. Your arms can be by your side, on your chest and belly, over your head, cactus, whatever's going to relax you. And eyes can be open or closed. Knees come to your chest, give them a squeeze. Kind of roll our side to side on your low back. And then you're gonna catch your feet or your big toes for happy baby. and extend your legs and shoot them to the ceiling and let your hands behind your head. For stability, curl yourself up, lower your right leg. We're gonna pulse 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, switch it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, switch it, 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 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, switch, 1, 2, switch, 1, 2, switch, 1, 2, switch, 1, 2, keep going, 2, switch, Okay, knees to a right angle for abdominal twists. Looks like a bicycle. Two, three, four, five, six. You advance this pose by trying to take your elbow to your knee rather than your knee to your elbow. So you go elbow to knee. Five more. Four, three, two. And one, you can bring your knees into your chest for a second and then extend your legs to the ceiling. Hands underneath your low back, lower one third. Flex your feet two thirds, hug the thigh bones in. To a hover, look at your feet, five, four, three, two, and one up. Again, one third, femurs into the pelvis, two thirds. Hover, chin to chest, five, four, three, two, all the way up, rock up into boat, Navasan. Any version is fine, right? Bent legs and reaching. I use my hands on the outer shins to integrate my shoulders. You can see how sloppy I get if I let go. So I'm pressing out as I press in, which gives me access. Hello, boot. High boot, low, high, low, high, rock up and back. You did it, down dog. So we do all that work for a lot of reasons. One of them is to get out of our head space, which is incredibly cluttered. The other one is to warm the body so that we can actually open it. And so now we're gonna open it. <coughs> right leg forward for half pigeon.
about three more breaths. And then slowly switch your sides. And take your time. If you're not quite done, finish, complete yourself, and then do the other side. Be diligent with your breath. It's real easy to forget here. Use your exhales to let go of any holding. Your inhales to re-engage in the core. A constant reminder of balance, softness and ease with firmness. Three more breaths. And then we're gonna drag the right leg in over the left. Drag, bring the right leg over the left. It was a drag for me. <laughs> Sometimes they're heavy, huh? Get your sits bone square. You're gonna stack the right shin so that it's at a square angle. The bottom leg is your governor. If you're really open, your bottom foot will come up and you're gonna stack shins. I'm not that open. So my bottom leg stays in a bit. And then you're looking for this boxy type look. and then switch sides. So the whole point of the entire practice was to create focus and allow for opening, allow for release, allow for your energy to be directed by you instead of the world around you. And so although we wanna get distracted here, I invite you to stay in and allow for what's possible here. Awesome. Frog pose, face down or face up. The face down version, you go to the, you lay on your mat lengthwise. You line your feet up with your knees and you just allow the pelvis to drop naturally using blocks or your arms as a prop. <coughs> Against the wall, it's just back down, legs up, same position. And breathe. I've been known to say, frog does you, you don't do frog. So you just come in and then you allow it to work. Breathing. Relaxing where you can.
then press forward and come out. Land on your seat. Tuck your right foot into your left thigh. Big reach and fold. Release in your hamstrings, your hips, your low back. Switch sides. Both legs forward. Reach up and fold. Hands behind your reverse tabletop. down, you take your hands underneath your seat, bend your elbows, open and fish. Shoulder stand or head stand. If you really need recovery, you can go legs up the wall or put your hips on a block and do waterfall. Purpose here is to rejuvenate. Naturally, after all of the stimulation, core work, hip openers, Inversions are more accessible. Head stand will start to make their way to child's pose. Shoulder stand to plow. Plow to ear pressure. And then we're going to meet on our backs, knees into chest. You're going to twist to the, take your legs to the left. You can go leg over leg or hold on to your right leg. Come back to center, go the other direction. <coughs> Come to center. Those of your feet together, knees out for butterfly. Allow your arms to rest by your side. Let your eyes close. When you're ready, Shavasana, extend your legs. Rest. 
oftentimes we don't allow for full rest. Take this opportunity. Deepen your breath where you are. And as you're ready, bring your knees into your chest. Come to your seat. <coughs> Hands to chest. Thank you for sharing your morning with me. Thumbs to forehead. I see you. Namaste. Y'all didn't give yourself a pause. <laughs>